Good morning to one and all. Uh, today we can uh, discuss something about the chronic uh, complications of uh, diabetes mellitus. Now the chronic uh, complications of diabetes mellitus include uh, angiopathy, nephropathy, uh, retinopathy, etc. Now talking about the angiopathy, now um, as the diabetic uh, patients have a higher level of uh, uh, cholesterol, especially the low density lipoprotein uh, cholesterol, uh, it is possible that this uh, LDL can be deposited uh, the, uh, in the arterial walls and might cause um, uh, arteriosclerosis. Now uh, the LDL level uh, which is above uh, 130 milligram is uh, considered to be abnormal and uh, uh, there is a chance that uh, this LDL uh, can be glycosylated in the diabetic uh, subjects and, um, and also uh, it may be oxidized. So the glycosylated uh, LDL and the oxidized LDL uh, are processed uh, in a different way. Uh, in a different way uh, in comparison to the ordinary LDL. Hence, the diabetic patients are uh, more susceptible to atherosclerosis. Now, um, normally the LDL is taken up uh, by the uh, clathrin uh, coated pits uh, in which there are LDL receptors uh, present. Now, these LDL receptors uh, combines with the uh, LDL and um, internalizes the complex and um, the LDL receptors are uh, going back to the cell surface. Now within the cell, this uh, LDL uh, consisting, uh, a, a consisting of uh, apoprotein uh, B100 and uh, the uh, cholesterol is separated and the apoprotein uh, B100 may be uh, hydrolyzed and uh, used as amino acids whereas the the cholesterol part of the LDL is uh, the one uh, which, uh, and which uh, causes the uh, different functions. Of course, uh, this cholesterol is very important in the formation of uh, vitamin D. It is also important in the formation of bile salts and also for various uh, steroid hormones. And also, uh, every cell of our body can synthesize cholesterol from uh, acetyl coenzyme A. Now acetyl coenzyme A could join with another acetyl coenzyme A and form acetoacetyl uh, coenzyme A uh, which joins with a third molecule of acetyl CoA and forms the uh, HFG CoA enzyme that is the hydroxymethyl butyryl uh, coenzyme. Now this uh, HFG CoA is further uh, reduced by HFG CoA reductase to mevalonate and then uh, by a series of uh, reactions it ultimately forms the cholesterol. The HMD coa reductase is the rate limiting enzyme of the cholesterol biosynthetic pathway and, uh, uh, and if the cell contains uh, enough cholesterol uh, then it is found that this enzyme uh, is inhibited by a feedback mechanism. So the cholesterol that is uh, absorbed through LDL receptors can actually inhibit uh, further synthesis of the uh, cholesterol and if uh, cholesterol levels in the cells are uh, decreased then the cholesterol synthesis uh, goes on. Now uh, the LDL receptors also can be upregulated and downregulated. The uh, cholesterol also can uh, act at the gene level uh, and uh, inhibit the transcription of LDL receptor gene into LDL um, mRNA. LDL mRNA uh, is further translated into LDL receptor protein. So if cholesterol uh, is sufficiently present then this um, LDL uh, gene is not transcribed into LDL mRNA and so uh, there is no synthesis of LDL receptors. So this is a regulated process which is happening. But in the case of diabetes uh, mellitus, as the, uh, the LDL has become abnormal, 
in the in the sense that uh, LDL is uh, oxidized or uh, and also it is uh, glycosylated. So these are abnormal uh, LDL which are more dangerous and so these can be taken up by the macrophages uh, rather than the clathrin coated uh, LDL uh, receptors. Uh, they are uh, taken up by the macrophages which is not a regulated process. So there is a lot of LDL being uh, taken up by the macrophages. Now these macrophages actually migrate into the uh, sub intimal layer of the walls of the arteries and there they absorb more uh, cholesterol and become uh, what is known as uh, cholesterol laden uh, form cells. Now these form cells uh, further accumulate uh, cholesterol and uh, then migrate uh, uh, and to this point the smooth muscle cell proliferation takes place and uh, uh, this will release various uh, cytokines and uh, growth factors and uh, this leads to the more collagen uh, synthesis and forms the basis of a uh, plaque. Now this plaque uh, develops and then uh, it is converted to an atherosclerotic plaque uh, thereby obstructing the flow of the uh, blood through the major arteries. Now this results in the atherosclerosis and uh, uh, this can lead to further lead to coronary artery disease and um, acute myocardial infarction. Now this is known as the angiopathy which is a major complication of um, uh, long-standing uh, diabetes mellitus. Now uh, long-standing diabetic uh, diabetes mellitus also can uh, lead to uh, nephropathy in the sense that the uh, glycosylation of the basement membrane proteins of the renal tissue uh, damages the, uh, the nephrons and so uh, this leads to the nephropathy and nephropathy is uh, indicated by the, uh, by the increased uh, uh, level of uh, serum creatinine and urea in the blood uh, due to a lack of uh, excretion of these uh, toxic compounds. So it is found that long standing, uh, ethero, uh, long -standing um, diabetes mellitus can result in uh, uh, renal insufficiency uh, and hence nephropathy. So uh, it is a must that the diabetic patients are uh, uh, subjected to uh, yearly checkup of the uh, uh, yearly checkup of the uh, creatinine and uh, urea urea uh, in their blood. And uh, another complication is the uh, retinopathy in which the uh, the high levels of glucose uh, can be converted to the sorbitol. And this sorbitol uh, cannot uh, go out of the uh, out of the lens, and uh, it, uh, the lens becomes uh, um, uh, lens becomes swelled up due to the osmotic effect, and this this leads to the uh, retinopathy. So this is another complication. Now another one, a fourth one, is the uh, peripheral neuropathy. Um, this is uh, mainly also due to the increased level of uh, um, glucose which will lead to uh, peripheral neuropathy. The uh, sensation uh, in the extremities are lost and um, the, uh, the patient uh, does not uh, uh, feel if there is any injury taking place. So these are some of the major complications and uh, it is possible that uh, this may lead to diabetic food and the patient uh, may get um, you know, bruised uh, on the foot and, uh, the, and the foot if it is not prop taken proper care may lead to um, um, gangrenous uh, foot and um, a stage might come uh, that uh, the uh, amputation procedure may have to be adopted. So these are some of the major complications, uh, chronic complications of the uh, diabetes uh, mellitus. Okay.